you are a great God. You are a great and mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. You sing how great, how great, how great is our God. Oh, hallelujah. Hey. Hey. You sing how great.
is you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. You've done great things for us, and you have been so merciful to us. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we worship. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In other words, the will of God for us is to give thanks in every situation. Because all we end in praise. The good, the bad, the ugly, the crooked part, the roughness, all we end in praise. I want us to speak and declare this word over Nigeria, over Plateau State, over Covenant World Christian Center International, that all, all, all we end in praise. Open your mouth as we make this declaration. Kandala bro shatali me la bro kosot olima. Le kanto li mara bro shatali katsanta ni na la bro nash kantante li mara bro nash katala bro shatala ba. Yaro kosonto li meta lo kosonto li menda la bara kosonto li me la bara kasanta liya. Father, we give you thanks for this is your will for us. Kentala bro shatali ba. Yara kosonto li menda la bro kosonto for we know. That all this work together for good. Hallelujah. Me cantoli mara broko soto li menda bakasi te li me laba. Yenda bro shata li me raka soto li me le virtinte nina. Yang cantoli manda la buru shata li me revada. Very Virginia. Every situation in Nigeria, all will end in praise. Cantoli mara bro si te li. Linka ro shata li nante dini atanda la koso patini. Linga ra bro soto li ati pita the sour. All we end in praise. Kandoli shatali. Linda rabro na tukatoli ke shatali la rabro totelia. Yanga lo rabro shatala la bro kusonto li mendali li ahikete. Linda rabro shatali makazo toli mele. Limba raso toli mendala bro kusonto li melabra. To them that love God and to them ha that are called according to His purpose. All this work together for our good. All we end in praise. Kandoli fra shatala ba. Linka roche tele mele barinde dinia yangando li prasha tali mele brako sonto li menda la brosha talaba. Oh, we give you thanks, Lord, Hallelujah. Make a roche tele mele brosha tal. Le ra brako sonto li menda la brosha tani ne katanda la lindi ni ne tendeli. Le 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 brosha talaba brako sonto li menda la yam brako sonto li mele brako santa live. Oh, Covenant World Christian Center International le karosi. All we end in praise, Hallelujah. Yen kanto li menda la broko santo li melebe. Yen da broko santo di re re. All things work together for our good. Men ka rufo santo li menda le rufo shkani. Kanda la la baroko santo li menda la bro shantali mele ya. Yen ka rufo santo li melebe de be de. Yenda la rosha ba roshka tendeli lendeli ya oh damen lead hallelujah a quiet and peaceable life mambro shantali we are leading glory hallelujah make us so for shantali me menda la robro shantali ya malaba davante nende deni ya lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty glory hallelujah. Oh, we end in praise, hallelujah. God has decided, they have chosen that all we end in praise. And this is his plan, this is his will for us, hallelujah. That all we end in praise. Oh, thank you, Lord, give him praise, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, this is your will for us in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. In every situation, the good, the bad, the ugly, the sour, hallelujah, the bitter, the sweet. All we earn in praise, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Kindly be seated for the media announcement.
Hallelujah, 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 somebody. But thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is his business to give us the victory. Let's lift up those hands and thank him for victory on every side. It was not by might, it was not by power that you came here this morning. He gave you the victory. It was not the alarm clock that woke you up this morning. So let's give him thanks that, uh, let's give him thanks uh, that is due to his name. Let's magnify him. Now clap your hands all you people shout out to God with a voice of triumph the Lord our God indeed in our midst is mighty mighty to save mighty to heal mighty to deliver hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah just wave and appreciate somebody for coming to church this morning. This is Covenant Word Christian Center International. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. You have come from the north, from the south, from the east. Now you are on God's side. So let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Let's shout unto the God of our triumph. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you praise, mighty God. We worship and extol your name this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, can we say our vision statement at least twice before we take our seats? One, two, go. To reap the harvest of the earth by teaching, preaching, and demonstrating the reality of Christian fellowship with God. Ultimately establishing lives in the word of God. Again, to reap the harvest of the earth by teaching, preaching, and demonstrating the reality of the Christian fellowship with Christ ultimately establishing lives in the word of God. Say it's happening in my life right now. It's activated right now. It is my experience in this season and beyond. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to welcome thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of you to church this morning. Those receiving us online and those that are seated right here in this auditorium, we appreciate the Lord for this time. This is Covenant Word Christian Center International, a world of divine possibilities. As we proceed in this service, let's receive the worship team for a special song in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Jesus Christ. Indeed, he's here. Let's lift up those hands to heaven and worship him this morning. Glory to God forevermore. Oh, glory to your name. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. Thank you for your presence that is so precious here in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for your great love for us this morning. Thank you for your great hand of, of goodness and kindness that is constantly demonstrated towards us. Thank you for this great gathering this morning. Thank you for all of those that are present here on site and all of those that are joining us online. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know the anointing of your spirit is present here to help us, to bless us, and to do exactly that which is needed in our lives. We yield to you, precious Father, this morning. We yield to you. Please have your way in our midst. Let the word of God have free course this morning. Let the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. Let questions be answered. Let doubts be dissolved. Let fear be dissolved and turn to faith. Let hope come alive. Let your people to be moved to new dimensions of victory and testimony. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' precious name. And all that grew with that prayer, shout a big hallelujah. All that grew with that prayer, shout a big amen. amen. Well, let's put our hands together and appreciate the Lord again this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God forevermore. Somebody shout and magnify his name. Glory! Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, please be seated in God's holy presence. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to welcome you to this great service this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for the privilege and honor he's given us to be alive and the privilege and honor to be able to fellowship together. Glory to the name of the Lord. And uh, it's good to see that you're able to make it through the elements and the weather this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. We give God praise and we give God glory. Welcome all of those also online. We trust that the same anointing of God's spirit as we always say. We know and believe that God's spirit is present with you wherever you are and as the word of God goes forth because God's presence cannot be bound by time and space the same anointing will touch you where you are and produce great results in your life in Jesus precious name please turn with me this morning to your Bibles to the book of Luke the sixth chapter we might also be reading from Matthew the seventh chapter praise the name of the Lord 
Luke the sixth chapter we're going to read from verses 46 to 49 and then most likely we'll also read Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27 thank you Lord and why call ye me Lord Lord Luke 6 46 yet you do not the things which I say whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them I will show you to whom he is like he is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation of that house on a rock and when the flood arose the stream beat vehemently upon that house glory to God but he that heareth and doeth not that is he that heareth my sayings or my words and doeth not it's like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently glory to God forevermore and immediately it fell and the ruin of the house was great now please keep your place there and let's also go to Matthew the seventh chapter Matthew the seventh chapter We'll read from the 24th through the 27th verses. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, or shall be compared to a foolish man, or shall be called a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it glory to the name of the Lord thank you Lord Jesus my thought this morning is build your life on the supernatural build your life on the supernatural I read these two texts because you see there are two different angles you see that in the book in the Gospels that are the disciples who wrote the Gospels based on the lens that they had and what they were trying to emphasize and who they were writing to they captured different accounts of Jesus ministry from different points of view that's why I wanted to read from both Luke chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 7 but the story here as we see it is Jesus as his custom usually was using natural stories to be able to you know portray or to establish spiritual truth now verse 46 he said why call ye me Lord Lord and do yet you do not do the things which I say glory to the name of the Lord now the illustration is very simple there were two individuals here and Jesus likened them as men that were building a house first of all he said whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings so he said, it's important for us to understand that Jesus was not talking about people that did not have access to him Okay, he was not talking about people in the world. That's very important for us to understand. He was talking to people who had access to him. Because he said, whosoever cometh to me. So for you to come to Jesus, that means you must have had respect for his life, respect for his ministry. And it's presumed that you will honor the things that he's going to say to you. But he said that there are two categories of people. The first of all them is the one that comes to me, he said, and heareth my sayings, glory to God, and doeth them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I will show you to whom that man is like. He said, he's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and beat and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. Glory to God forevermore. But another man heareth, he heard, and he didn't do anything with what he heard. It's like that man without a foundation. He built a house upon the earth against which the stream, the Bible said, did beat vehemently and immediately fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Glory to the name of the Lord. So I want you to understand first and foremost that both of these individuals 
in Jesus, according to Jesus' example or, or you know, illustration, we're building something. Glory to God. Now I want you to understand this, that every Christian or believer is building something. Remember that we're not talking, he's not, he's not talking to the world here because the world has no respect for Jesus or Jesus' sayings. But he's talking here about people who had access to him. Every one of us is building something. Glory to the name of the Lord. And Jesus is showing us exactly how we're building. Are you here somebody? It shows us over and over and over the great central, uh, one of the great truths that the Bible tells us that words are the building blocks of life. Words are the building blocks of right, life. Just like you build buildings with concrete or mortar, depending on what you're building, some people build their own buildings with steel, glass, whatever it is. But words in, in life are the building blocks of life. Words are given to us to build our lives. Hallelujah. So when we say that everybody's building something, you must understand that how you are building or the way you are building is through words. Without words, you'll have no instruments or material to build. So this first man, the Bible said, came to Jesus and he heard Jesus sayings. Glory to the name of the Lord. And he did something with what Jesus said. And the Bible said, it likens him unto somebody. Are you here somebody? The example is a man who built a house. And in building the house, the Bible said, this man digged deep. Glory to God forevermore. There is said here in verse 48, for verse 48, this man digged deep. And then he laid the foundation upon a rock. Glory to God forevermore. He digged deep. Or I know it's Kinja's language. He dug deep, dig deep. But he's, he's, he, he put the thing deep. Are you here somebody? So you see, there's some category of people who are digging and they're, when they're building, first and foremost, they build and establish a foundation. Now, I, I know I have some builders here. I know that our brother, actually, Dipo is a, is a builder here. And I know that the other people that build us maybe listen to me here somewhere in the auditorium or online. You know that nobody is going to build a house without establishing some kind of a foundation. You don't build a house without a foundation. In, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's criminal in the, in the law of building. Are you here, somebody? As a matter of fact, we are told that you can predict what kind of house you're going to build from the quality or strength of the foundation. So when you see the mix and the design of the foundation, you have some idea about what kind of house this is going to be. Is this going to be a bungalow? Is this going to be a superstructure? What kind of a structure it is? So this man established, first of all, he built a foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says he digged. Not only did he dig, but he dug very deep. Hallelujah. That means this man had in mind of building something that was lasting. Are you here, somebody? You know, I was reading a story many years ago, quite some time ago, and somebody was giving an analogy or an example about a shipbuilder or a builder of a boat. And he said that there are two men, that were, two people that were building a boat, or building boats, two, two boat builders were building. And they said that when they looked at the, at the building, at the, the way they were building a boat, the first one that was building the boat went through the boat very, I mean, well through building the boat very, very quickly and was so careful about putting fine paint on the boat. So careful about the design and the aesthetics of the sails. Hallelujah. How the name of the boat will be written. How that people will look at that boat and they'll say, oh, what a wonderful and beautiful boat. And in no time the boat was built. But then this other boat builder, he took his time in building the boat. He carefully chose the wood or the materials that he used at very critical points of the of the boat you know why because he was thinking as he was building i want to build a boat that can withstand the worst kind of storm oh hallelujah so builders will tell you build with crisis in mind build with a storm in mind don't build your life for aesthetics or show glory to god build your life to withstand crisis this is what jesus was saying so that boat builder, you know, he took his time. And the other first people were just laughing at him and said, look at me. I've, I mean, we've gotten our boat out so quickly. But look at you. Your boat is just here. You've been taking all this time building your boat. But this guy was meticulous because he was a sailor. All of them were sailors. But he sat down, he thought, and he looked, what are the parts of this boat that need to be reinforced? What are the parts of this boat that are going to give it the most resilience against the worst kind of storm? So when he took his time and, and put those things in place, carefully choosing the materials, then he carefully began to assemble the boat together. And after he had made sure that the boat was sturdy, then he started decoration. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the first man, his priority was decoration. His priority was aesthetics. His priority was, how would they see me? Praise the name of the Lord. 
His priority was the Gucci tie. Glory to the name of the Lord. <laughs> his priority was how he would look on television. <laughs> his priority was how the boat would look. And they were clapping and saying, oh, what a wonderful boat. What a beautiful boat. And indeed, the boat was majestic. Indeed, the boat was beautiful. Oh, but my brother, my sister, I've learned in life that not all that glitters is gold. <laughs> not all that glitters in gold is gold. Uh, you will know the substance or quality of a thing under pressure. No, you don't know the substance of a quality of a thing under um, pleasurable circumstances. You know the stuff you are made of under pressure. I like the way somebody said it. He said, it is pressure that introduces you to yourself. It's pressure that shows you, what you, are being, what you what's really inside of you. It's pressure that will show people that have been consistently coming to church, whether they've been coming, whether they've been coming to church, praise the name of the Lord, or whether they've been building themselves with the word of God. Because you see, you can come to church, not just be building yourself with the word of God. You can be a member, a consistent member of Covenant World Christian Center International without taking time to absorb and assimilate the word of God that's been taught here and make it a part of your life. But you know what? The storm will tell. Not time, the storm. And so these boats went out into sea. And when they went out into sea, everybody was clapping at this other boat. This first boat was majestic and gorgeous. The other one was majestic and gorgeous too. But they went out into sea and they were sailing. And somewhere in the middle of their experience, suddenly a storm came. And when the storm came, blessed be the name of the Lord, <laughs> it was beating upon that boat, just like our story here said. It hits the boat. You know how storms can be on sea. It can be very rough and very turbulent. And this was a very turbulent one. And little by little, the aesthetics of the first boat began to fall away. Little by little, it began to fall away as the waves hit the boat. Because this guy had been so quick to rush through and not mind to build the way that he should have built, the boat started little by little breaking in on, on, on the sea. And then here comes this other guy. His boat was being hit and tossed to and fro by every kind of wind. Praise God forevermore. And yet his boat was riding the waves. Eventually a wind came and crashed upon the first boat and split it in half. And everybody was in, on the boat who had gone there to admire and be part of that first trip, historic trip, was thrown into the sea. And this second man began to gradually go from one person to the other and pull them out of the sea and bring him into his own boat. And at the end of the day, by the grace of God, he was able to get and rescue all of them and they made their way back to the harbor, to the berth. Praise God forevermore. And people sat and they were looking. And the big moral of that story is this, that when you're building, build with a storm in mind. Are you here, somebody? That's just a side journey, but I thought it would bless somebody. Here it says that there are two men. Both of these men had access to Jesus. Both of these men were around Jesus, but one man came to Jesus and made up his mind. He heard what Jesus said, and he said, I'm going to do it. And the Bible said, this is how Jesus likened him. A man that built a house, he built a foundation. Nobody builds a house without a foundation. But the, man the Bible tells us this man was meticulous. Not only did he dig deep. Now, the digging deep implies that time was involved. This man was not in a hurry to build because he had, he, had, he had a vision. His vision was, I want to build something that will last. I want to build something that will endure. I want to build something that will, that will stand the test of time. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says he dug deep and he established a foundation. Praise God forevermore. Now look at verse 48 there. He said, when the flood arose. I like this word when. Are you here somebody? When means that it is inevitable. The flood arose. Let me just read that completely. When the flood arose, when the stream beat vehemently upon that house, it could not shake it. But look at this. It said, when the flood arose, when the stream beat vehemently, the word vehemently there means that it was, it was beating against that house. It was attacking the house with an intention to break it. Are you here, somebody? So when, you know, I love the Lord. He didn't lie to us. In John 16, 33, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation or pressures but he said be of good cheer i have overcome the world the amplified class say, i've removed or stripped this world of its ability to harm you praise the name of the lord but look at this the flood arose the bible said it, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and i love this the bible said it could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock blessed be the name of the lord the man had done his homework are you here somebody now, Jesus gave this wonderful illustration and picture, and we see that what is the implication of it to us? Jesus is talking about coming to Jesus, hearing his sayings, and doing them. Praise the name of the Lord. 
you come to Jesus, you hear his sayings and you do them, you're like that man that dug your house, built your house, dug a foundation and dug your foundation deep. Not only did you dig your foundation deep, but you now dug and established your foundation upon a rock. No better place to establish your foundation. Let's be the name of the Lord. The Bible said you could not shake it. What are the floods? What are the streams? The floods and the streams of life are the things that come against us in this world. Are you here somebody? I think about this global pandemic season and I think about this scripture. Praise the name of the Lord. The floods have arose, have arisen. The winds have come. Are you here somebody? In Matthew 7 there you see it talks about the winds. It talks about the waves. But here it said it could not shake that house. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you here somebody? Our thought is build your life on the supernatural. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know I heard Dr. Mike Murdoch say many, many years ago. He said that there are two aspects of Jesus. His person and his principles. His person and his sayings. Now knowing the person of Jesus will guarantee you his peace. You have peace with God. You have a place in heaven. You are citizens of God's kingdom. But knowing his principles or sayings will establish his blessing and his prosperity in your life. Are you here somebody? Now you look at the world, many, many, I, I discovered because many years ago I used to be an avid student of success, honestly. But you know, something stopped me in my tracks because the more I researched the subject of success, the more I saw that all the fundamental principles of success that even people that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior teach are all from the Bible. So I told myself, why am I wasting my time? Let me go to the source. <laughs> I'm not saying that you won't get, glean some beneficial things from that. I, I, I'm going to the source. Glory to the name of the Lord. Because all these things come from the word of God. The Bible said that God causes his reign to fall both on the just and the unjust. Glory to God forevermore. On the just and the unjust. That's how God is. You see, people, um, people who don't know Christ can lay hold of the, on the principles, the basic principles of Christ and prosper and succeed in this world without having a relationship with Jesus. But you see something, our, our, our privilege and our benefit is the fact that success in life is not just a matter of building on principles. There is a spiritual dimension to life that you must factor in. There is a devil in this world. Oh, are you here somebody? And he's a mean devil. <laughs> there is a curse upon the earth that came upon this earth as a result of the fall of man. And so, it's important to understand this that you must put those two things together the person of Jesus and his principles you must know him for yourself and then you put into practice what he said and what the Bible said is that you come to a place in your life where you become like a rock blessed be the name of the Lord I said blessed be the name of the Lord that means that there's a there's a category of people upon earth who know Jesus and practice his sayings or put the word of God to work nothing can shake them nothing can move them Nothing can swallow them. Nothing, nothing on this earth can swallow them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, like Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, the rendition in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, that whosoever heareth these words of mine, sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, hallelujah, which built his house upon a rock. I like that dimension that Matthew put. Amen. Matthew called that man a wise man. You know, I was listening to Kenneth Copeland many years ago and he, he said something that's really been a great blessing to me. Every time I remember it. He said, listen, if you want a wise man's results, just obey the wise man's or follow the wise man's sayings. If you, if you get, gain access to the sayings of a wise man and put them into practice, you will get a wise man's results. Jesus said, anybody who hears these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him. I will compare him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And he said, the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. It was founded upon a rock. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, one thing I want us to realize is this. Even the man whom Jesus commended from being, for being wise and for hearing and practicing his sayings was not exempted from the storm. So obeying Jesus' words does not exempt you from the storm, but it gives you advantage in the storm. It helps you not just survive, but thrive through the storm. Praise the name of the Lord. Now the storm is, like I said, indicative of any or all kinds of situations in life. You see, when, when the Bible is talking about that man building a house, there are many places in the Bible that the Bible describes the, a house being built. For example, Psalm 127 verse 1 said, 
um, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Remember that scripture? Those of us who are Bible students. Verse 2 said, except the Lord keeps a city, the watchman waketh in vain. He said, it's vain for you to rise up late and say, wake up early and rise and stay up late, eating the bread of sorrows. He said, but he giveth his beloved sleep. Now that house is simply, you know, illustrative language. But I'm, and like I said earlier, everybody's building something. And listen, your life is a house that you are building. Are you here, somebody? Do you realize that the few mo moments we have spent here in the presence of God will never in history come back? They have gone forever. I said they've gone forever. The only way that it will profit you is your investment in it. Nobody invests his time in God's presence and ever, I will not reap good benefits. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? So your life is like a house that you're building consciously or unconsciously. Day by day, you are building something. But you need to take heed what you're building. Praise the name of the Lord. And that house represents the life of a man. I like, can you give me Proverbs chapter 24? Proverbs 24, verse 3. He said, through wisdom is a house built. By understanding is it established. Oh, hallelujah. And by knowledge, its chambers are filled with all manner of precious substance. Through wisdom is a house built. By understanding or by knowledge. By understanding it is established. By knowledge it is filled. All the chambers thereof are filled with all precious substance. Now you can compare your life. Because that's what Jesus was, was saying there. That the man was building a house. It was just an illustration. But what's the house? It's the man's life. It's the man's life he was building. And I said words are the building blocks. Praise the name of the Lord. Now look at this. Said, Through wisdom a house is built. By understanding it is established or made strong and firm. By knowledge, all the chambers or rooms in that house are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Glory to God forevermore. So God's plan is for your life not only to be well built, but every chamber, every room in your life to be filled with present and precious riches. Praise the name of the Lord. The chambers in your life are the many arenas, many dimensions of your life. Glory to God forevermore. Your relationships, if you're a business person, your career person, your business, your career, your profession, hallelujah. Those of us who are in ministry, it has to do with your finances, it has to do with your health, it has to do with your marriage. Look, these are the, the, the chambers of your life. And as long as you're living on this earth, every chamber of your life will face a storm at some point. That is not a prayer request. It will happen. Jesus said, when, not if. Just like Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 2, he said, when you, walk through, when you walk through the fire, it will not kindle upon you. When you walk through the water, go through the waters, it will not overflow you. The rivers, they will not consume you. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is a when in life. Are you here somebody? Right now upon the earth, we are facing a when concerning corona pandemic. Praise the name of the Lord. But you know something, there are some people in this world that, that this pandemic cannot consume. There's some people in this world that even the fallout, the economic fallout, or any other fallout of this, economic, uh, sorry, of this um, pandemic cannot consume. Now, apart from the global crisis right now, individually, as individuals, we're facing storms. Apart from coronavirus issue, it may be that somebody listening to me in this auditorium or online is facing a storm now. Oh, glory to God! I said glory to God. But there's a remedy for a storm. I said there's a remedy for a storm. God did not say that your faith will make you not face a storm. God did not say your anointing will not make you face a storm. In fact, sometimes some of the most anointed people are the ones that face the most crisis. It seems like the anointing of God's spirit grows in crisis. But look at this. He said that when you're faced with that storm, praise the name of the Lord, what you should concern yourself with is the quality of materials that you're building. You're using to build. Remember, all of these people had access to the words of Jesus. I liken it to people who know Jesus as Lord and Savior and they come to church. It's wonderful to know Jesus as Lord and Savior and it's wonderful to come to church. We ought to do it. It's important. But the end goal of that is so that we can absorb his sayings. We can hear and we can do his sayings. At the end of the day, praise the name of the Lord, it is what you're hearing and doing about the words that you have heard that is going to make you excel in this life. Praise the name of the Lord. So I can prophesy your end when I understand what you're doing with the words of Jesus. Are you here somebody? What do you do 
when you're faced with a marital storm, you go and find what the Bible says about it. Are you here, somebody? And you do what the Bible, you don't argue with the wisdom of God. You see, every man's wisdom is found in his words. The wise man's wisdom is found in his words. God is the author of life. God is the originator of the house. When you find the word of God, you don't argue with it. Praise God forevermore. One of the big things by way of, you know, discussion between my wife and I in these past days, especially as we consider the things that are unraveling as a result of this global pandemic, is how much of a failure this world system is. The more things are unraveling, those of you who are following the, 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 the events, the more things are unraveling, you see the deceit in the world system. Are you a somebody? You see how people exalt money and power more than human beings. You see that human beings mean nothing to people. But it's not them. It's the spirit of the world. It's the spirit of the world. Every man is only as powerful as the spirit inspiring him. And the Bible said this world life in darkness. In darkness. My brother and my sister, my passion in sharing this morning is this. If, if more than anything, this global pandemic should show us something. That it's time for us to migrate completely to the supernatural. Migrate your life to the supernatural. I said, migrate your life to the supernatural. I said again, migrate your life to the supernatural. If you have been slack, please gain strength and begin to rebuild. Listen, the good thing about this is that in natural life, in natural life, you can't rebuild a building that's already built. You can only renovate. But if you want to really deal with a building that is, has, been, has, been, has suffered a lot of structural failure, you have to bring it down. Are you here, somebody? And many times you have to re-examine the foundation and make sure it's not a foundational problem. If it's a foundational problem, you might want to tell yourself it may be more expensive to exhume the foundation and rebuild it. You might have to just go and get a fresh piece of land. But in the realm of the spirit, it may not be that tedious. Are you here, somebody? In the realm of the spirit, you can take God's word and begin to recalibrate your life. Oh, hallelujah. If you've been playing around with the word of God, it's time for you to recalibrate your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Building on the words of Jesus is building on the wisdom of God. Every man's words reflect that man's wisdom. Let's look at this in Proverbs chapter 1, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Proverbs chapter 1. While we're going there, remember this thought. Both men were not spared from the storm. No matter how diligent you are, even in applying the words of Jesus, it will not exempt you from the storm, but it will give you advantage in the storm. The storm will not be able to consume you. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm telling you this, my brother, my sister. It's important for us to understand this. God wants you to have, to look nice, to smell nice, to have a wonderful appearance. God wants you to, you know, he doesn't want you to live a shabby life. Are you here, somebody? But when it comes to building, it's very important for you not to make your major investment on the aesthetics. Don't make your major investment in life on things that can easily flow change. Are you here, somebody? On things that don't matter. Don't major on the minors of life. Major on the majors. Because everybody's going to face a storm at one point or the other. Are you here, somebody? Listen, this world system, the floods, the winds, it will come against your finances. It will come against your health. It will come against your marriage. It will come against your family. It will come against your business. But there's no need to be afraid. If you have built well, the storm will only reveal one big truth that it cannot consume you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at the Bible said that it did not shake. That thing did not shake. So in the face of any crisis, let's take the word of God that said, fear not. Praise the name of the Lord. Rather mind or take heed what you're building. Glory to the name of the Lord. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. Let's look at verse 20, please. 20, 21, 23 quickly. Praise the name of the Lord. 20, 21, and 23. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse. Concourse is the place where, where of meeting. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, verse 23. Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Now, I just read that scripture to show something, to buttress the fact that in a man's words, you find his wisdom. Are you here, somebody? Listen, everybody has wisdom. Oh. It just depends the quality or kind of wisdom. 
<laughs> There's a kind of wisdom that's called foolishness. It's actually a kind of wisdom. It's very low wisdom. Praise God forevermore. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of reasoning. It's a way of doing things. Praise God forevermore. But you see, the Bible teaches us that there are different kinds of wisdom. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Glory to God forevermore. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's see verse... Um, thank you, Lord. Verse 6, I think. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. My heart this morning is migrate your life praise the name of the lord quickly to the supernatural lean upon the supernatural now look at this verse 6 first corinthians 2 verse 6 it says how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature yet not the wisdom of this world look at this the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that is coming to nothing that word not here is the word, word in greek kartiju. it means to, be un, in, to render something inactive, inoperative, and ineffective, or unemployed. Are you here, somebody? So the Bible said that the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of this world can, can categorize itself in, 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 in wisdom that's been gleaned. Natural wisdom is not harmful, but it's the wisdom of this world. Praise the name of the Lord. We find that in the world of the intellectuals. We find that in the world of education. We find that in the four walls of our learning schools. It's not necessarily evil or bad. We, we use it. It's beneficial to some extent. Are you here, somebody? Then he talks about the princes of this world. The prince of this world here is not talking about physical rulers. It's talking about demon spirits in high places, influencing the affairs of this world from the unseen realm. But the Bible said that their wisdom is coming to nothing. Cartigio, ineffective, inoperative. So if you're building your life on the wisdom of this world, it is coming to nothing. Are you here, somebody? Ineffective. As we are talking today, no one person has found a real remedy or cure for coronavirus. Is that the, 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 the only thing that has come out here as, a, as, a, as an outstanding truth and a consistent truth is that if you boost your immune system, you have the best chances of overcoming the virus, naturally speaking. Of course, in Christ, we know better. I say in Christ, we know better. We have the privilege of boosting our new immune system, but we have the privilege of what Christ has done for us. By his stripes we are healed. None of these diseases that came on Egypt come upon us. We are covenant people. Are you here, somebody? Disease does not thrive in our domain. So we don't do away with the natural knowledge, no, but we establish the spiritual knowledge and supernatural knowledge as the ultimate knowledge. Praise God forevermore. So there's a wisdom of this world. There's a wisdom of the prince of this world. It's coming to nothing. But the Bible said in verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God has ordained or commissioned for our glory. Where do you find a man's wisdom? In his words. Praise the name of the Lord. And the good news of this thing is this. The key to the supernatural realm is the word of God. That's the key. See, there is a natural realm and there is a supernatural realm. Are you here, somebody? The natural realm is only limited in resource to the knowledge and wisdom of the natural. But as a believer, as a Christian in this world, you are in this world, you're not of this world. There is another realm. There is a supernatural world. I've been telling people over and over, once you get a taste of the supernatural, nothing else will satisfy you. Once you understand by experience that there are options, <laughs> There's an exception to the rule. Your life does not have to end up the way that circumstances in this world say they are going to end up. You see, when that flood arose, when the winds and, the, and the, those floods, they came against those two houses. If you look at the word vehemently, vehemently there in the Greek, the word there is, it had an intention to break to pieces that house. When Satan rises against you, whether it's through circumstances, whether it's through human beings, he, his intention is to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you build according to God's wisdom, his wisdom is nothing compared to God's wisdom. God's wisdom renders satanic wisdom inoperative. I like that word. I've been using it a lot. We've been using it a lot in the past few days in uh, our morning devotional. It means to render something unemployed. To render it ineffective. Do you know that you can render satanic wisdom unemployed? When you apply the wisdom of God to the corona pandemic, 
whether it's the health dimension, the economic dimension, the security dimension, whatever other, other kind of dimension, it will render the wisdom of God manifesting through circumstances. Unemployed. It will strip it from its ability to bring forth its intention or the intended result in your life. Are you here, somebody? I want to, I want to suggest to you, admonish you with the depth of my heart, use this season as leverage to migrate your life completely to the supernatural. Don't live a part of your life in the natural. Say, so, Pastor, what do you mean by that? I'm saying that don't, I'm talking about your confidence. Don't leave your financial confidence. Take, withdraw, withdraw, go to the bank of confidence and withdraw all your deposits in the natural realm. And go and reinvest them in the spirit. Go back to God's word. What did this man say? The Bible said concerning this first man who heard and did what God said. He said he dug deep. Digging takes time. Are you here somebody? Take advantage of any time you have. Praise the name of the Lord. Go back to the word of God. That digging deep means it's not just hearing the word of God. It's staying with it. Using your mind to think over it. What is the implication of this thing that I've heard? That's meditation. How is this supposed to affect my life today? What are the adjustments I'm supposed to make my, in my life so that I can come into alignment with the word of God? What does the word of God say about this? My finances, my health, my family. Go, listen, God's word is so comprehensive. It has something to say about every aspect of life. When you find it, make up your mind. I'm going to be that wise man. I'm going to build my life on the wisdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not going to listen to any wisdom. Anything that I hear, any knowledge that I absorb, in my life. I'm going to take the word of God and I'm going to use this as the final authority. Building in the supernatural means using the word of God and the wisdom of God as your final authority. Let God's word become the final authority of your life. Are you here somebody? You see, both the righteous and the wicked, storms will come. But I'm not even talking about the wicked. I'm talking about the camp of the Lord. This is people, all of us in church. There's some that will hear God's word and practice it. Hear God's word and allow it to become their philosophy of life. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to build my life this way now. I'm going to trust the wisdom of God. I love what Jesus Duplante said. He said, God is the only one that you can afford to obey and, and, you, and you will not have any cause to worry about the consequences of your obedience. God is the only one you can obey without explanation. When you find the wisdom of God and put it into practice, you're building on the sure foundation that will never fail you. Glory to the name of the Lord. You know what the Bible said about the other man? He called him a fool. God forbid. No fools here in Jesus' name. No fools listening to me here in Jesus' name. On site or online. No fool. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you here somebody? <laughs> the wisdom of the world will tell you that when things are challenging financially, any little money you find, hold it very well. But the wisdom of God will tell you that when times are challenging financially, as God provides for you to the extent that you see finances, praise the name of the Lord, you don't stop the protocol of tithing and giving because you want the supernatural to flow in your life. There is a supernatural flow in life, my brother, my sister. Are you here, somebody? There is a supernatural flow. So in every area of, of life, there's opportunity for you to access the wisdom of God. The starting point is from the word of God. The Bible says that these floods, they hit these two houses. Praise the name of the Lord. And the floods revealed what the people were building with. Praise the name of the Lord. The floods revealed that one man was a fool. The other man was wise. The Bible said that when the floods hit that second man's house, he built, the Bible said, when he dug his house, he, he, he dug, he did not even wait to establish a foundation. Can you imagine that? Matthew said he built on sand. How can you build a house on sand? Now, you're, you're listening to me and you're saying, hey, because it sounds so, it sounds so, I mean, it sounds so crazy. But that is what an individual who is hearing God's word and not practicing it is doing. Luke said, without a foundation, when the floods came, Kai, he said that that house fell. And Matthew said, the ruin of that house was great. All of a sudden, aesthetics didn't matter. Are you here, somebody? Have you ever noticed that when, when sickness hits your body? Are you here somebody? High heels don't matter. Lipstick does not matter. August, uh, Pastor, 
Sickness has hit my body and I, and I, I hated shoes and clothes. I don't care about suits. All I want is my body well. There are some things that when they hit you, some things don't matter. Having the best house does not matter. It's good to have the best house. But it's, look, just aim to have a good house, not the best house. All these things that men are struggling, I want the best car. I want to be first. I want to have the biggest church. I want, I want to have the most beautiful car. It's not important. What's important is building your life on the word of God. Listen, when sickness hits your body, you, money is not important. There's a point you feel like slapping everybody around you. You just want your body back in peace. But I tell you the truth, when you build on the foundation of God's word, when you put first things first, when you put the word of God first, when you make it the final thought in your life, when you migrate your life to the supernatural by rebuilding or rebuilding, some people listening to me need to rebuild and do it quickly. Some people who have been building just need to reinforce it. Praise the name of the Lord. Some people who have not started building at all need to start putting foundation. But you know the good thing about it is that in this season, of the double portion there's acceleration for you if you start moving in the right direction the anointing of God's spirit will come upon you and push you in your way migrate your life to bring yourself to a place that you refuse to trust in the wisdom of men are you here somebody I look at what's going on in the world today <laughs> countries that are called so called civilized and developed you see the wisdom that they're building on fake wisdom lies are you here, somebody? Lies, lies, lies. People have placed money above human beings. Listen, the only one you can ultimately and absolutely trust is God. Build your life on the wisdom of God. You'll have no regret. The storm will come. You can't pray it away. But the storm will reveal the quality of your building. And you will rise above that storm. And when all is said and done, you will discover that nothing has been missing. and Nothing has been lost. That's my prayer for you today. I said, that's my prayer for you today. I said, that's my prayer for you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as you leave this place, my prayer for you is that something will grip our heart like never before. You know, you, know, you, can, never, you can never come to a place in God where you stop growing. That a consciousness of how reliable God and God's system is will come to your spirit. And you start making the greatest investments of your life where it matters the most. Are you here, somebody? Build with a storm in mind. The storm will come. It won't last forever. Oh. But I tell you the truth, if you have not built well, the storm will wreck everything that you have around about you. You have to start rebuilding. It does not have to be that way. I say it does not have to be that way. When you prioritize the word of God in your marriage, in your business, in every aspect of your life, you're building invisible structures, supernatural structures that would withstand anything. And your life will keep going upwards and forwards in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stand in faith with you today in Jesus' name that every need is turned into a supply. That every concern is turned to a testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That this week as you reprioritize the word of God again. I know many of us have already been prioritizing. But as you reprioritize it again. Uh, there will be workings of miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stand in faith with you that as you reprioritize the word of God. God will give you some quick wins this week. In your finances, in your health. In the work of your hands that the favor of god will rise up to meet you this week in the precious name of the lord jesus christ this is a blessed week for you in jesus name this is a favor filled week for you in the name of the lord jesus christ as you go this week you hear a voice behind you saying this is the way of the lord walk in it as you go this week you discover unseen paths that will made, be made known to you as you go this week you'll experience the supernatural in your life and god will prove himself true over and over and over again you are not subject to this system of this world you are not subject to the times you are the blessed of the lord so go ahead and build your house upon the rock blessed be the name of the lord and go go ahead and 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 render render every storm in your life unemployed in the precious name of the lord jesus christ father we give you thanks father we give you glory in jesus precious name please put those hands together let's give the lord a mighty shout of praise this morning Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout of praise as we welcome Pastor Mary to take us further. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we give you praise. We receive your word. We receive your word. We receive your wisdom to be the wise builder. Thank you, Father. We give you thanks. Your word settles in our heart, takes root, and brings fruit. 
thank you in Jesus name hallelujah please can you be seated as we prepare our tithes and offerings we thank God for his mighty words for these great words we have heard. hallelujah I'm sure you have um, envelopes on your seats for offering and tithes please package them appropriately if you want to make any form of giving then the envelope the appropriate envelope is not there please indicate by a raise of the hand so we can call the usher's attention to attend to you lord we give you praise i think ushers please there are hands there if we've done that can we be upstanding praise the lord father we give you praise we give you thanks we give you honor we give you adoration Thank you, Father, for your word that has come so strongly to us. Thank you for hearts that are receptive to your words, O oh God. Father, this morning we declare that we agree with you. We come over to your side to become wise leaders. Lord, we switch over to the supernatural. And we hang our lives on your supernatural. Because Jesus, by your blood, you have paid for us to enjoy the supernatural. We invoke the supernatural on our lives, on our health, our finances, our families, our endeavors, everything that has to do with us. We give you praise. Lord, standing on your finished works on the cross, we declare that our broke days are over forever. We declare there is a mighty supply. We declare here comes the money. We declare that as your people we are severed forever from every negative fallout of this global pandemic we declare that our lives are not determined by what is happening in the world our lives are determined by your word because we belong to the kingdom that rules over all lord we give you praise we lift up tithers before you this morning. And we ask, oh God, that you pour them out a blessing that they will have no room enough to contain it. We thank you because the devourer is rebuked for their sakes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You are our great, sufficient God. Thank you for overflow. Right now, we lift up our voice. I'd like us to lift up our voices and call for the money. Say, here comes the money three times. One, two, three, go. Here comes the money. Again, here comes the money. For the last time, here comes the money. Thank you, Father. As we have, we have spoken in your ears, so it is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Please pass your, your Titan offerings to the person on your left until it gets to the aisle. If you've done that, please be seated for a few reminders. Hallelujah. Well, quickly to remind us that we should um, join in the online morning devotion, the morning manner, every day at 8 a.m., Monday to Saturday. Hallelujah. And on Wednesday again, please get online for our Wednesday midweek service at 5 p.m. Invite your friends, invite your neighbors to be part of it. Healing and Miracle Service will be on on Friday at 10 a.m. Please get online and be part of that as well. Hallelujah. I know we have been mightily blessed. No house here will collapse because the foundation is sure. We give God praise for his word this morning. As we get ready to exit, we'd like to implore that you please no prolonged chit-chatting so that the next set of people can come into church for the second service. Can we be on our feet as we bring the service to a close? Father, thank you because you have done us well. Thank you because your people are preserved. Nobody under the sound of my voice here will be on time for tragedy. 
Lord, thank you for the speakings of the blood of Jesus. The voice of the blood of Jesus is amplified over every satanic mantra concerning anyone here. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are a people preserved. We are a people kept. We are a people exempted from evil. The plague cannot come near our dwelling and no evil befalls us. Thank you, Lord. This is our confidence because of what you have done on the cross. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our very long lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Have a great Sunday.